for those of you who missed Daybreak's interview with Cesar Milan, you're in luck. In this report by Claire, the dog whisperer opens up about his professional and personal struggles. His dreams called from the other side of the world, from a sleepy Mexico barrio. Cesar was determined to shake off the negative connotation to El Perero, or dog boy, a label that as a little boy he was bullied with but as a man would be his moniker as he claims fame. He set out for America, crossed borders and learned the language, armed only with grim determination that his gift would see him through. And it did. He arrived. I found a spot for me in the United States, you know, which nobody was really owning it. You know, because I'd say, well, I'm not going to train dogs, I'm going to train people. Because I felt that the people were needed the information. They would treat a dog like a human, and then they would expect the dog to do things. You would never treat an elephant like a human, right? You have to learn elephant psychology. But in this case, they were, they were uh, talking to a dog like he was a human, and then blaming him for everything. Why do you shoe my shoe? You know what I mean? Why do you pee in the bed? And so people will talk to the dog like that. And to me, it was fascinating to see people <laughs> talking to a dog like he's a human. And that's when I opened the Dog Psychology Center in a, in a barrio, in, a, in the hood, you know, and, and people start coming. His first clients helped build his reputation. Nicholas Cage, Vin Diesel, and power couple Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. But it was not these celebrities that made Cesar a pop culture staple. His natural way with dogs, dealing with the especially aggressive ones, was his ticket to success. When people scream at their pets to show who's boss, Cesar whispered. And just like that, dogs listened. Now you handle dogs with a technique that you call the calm, assertive energy. It's a, it's a way of being, you know, that allows people to trust and respect. You know, if I'm too hostile, too angry, you're going to feel it, right? So it's really about knowing yourself and what, and what causes around you. So if you're angry, you're frustrated, if you uh, any kind of negative energy, if you're talking to people, people are going to feel it, especially animals. Animals don't know what you're talking about. What they know is how you feel, right? So it's, it's about understanding what makes a dog or a horse or an elephant or whatever you want to have a relationship with trust you and respect you. And they only respect calm, assertive energy. They don't respect hostile energy, angry energy. They don't follow that. What it makes you how you handle dogs different from other, let's say, professional dog trainers? The difference between myself and other professionals is I focus on teaching the human, first and foremost. Then we focus on what technique can work for that dog. But if without teaching the human to change habits, the dog will never change. So it's meaningless to focus on the dog if the owner will never change. But like any man on his way to the top, trials hovered and hounded. Cesar was sidetracked four years ago. You went through a tough time when Danny, your dog, passed away. Yeah. So how did you pick yourself back up uh, from that moment? And how did you move on? And how has it changed you? I didn't know how to deal with a failure, especially um, you know, losing uh, somebody so important to me, losing my marriage, and, and really not belonging to any pack. I accept my failure, or what I call failure, and then once, once I got drowned on that, I got tired of it. You know, it's a, you go into a, a, into a victim mode, a victim moment. Uh, but if you suppress it, you will never deal with it. So a lot of people live like that. I, I just went and embraced it. And after that, I got tired. And then I went back and to start helping dogs. I went back to what I knew best. And Cesar is his old self again, speaking once more for creatures that he loves something fierce. Animals don't need human. We need the animals. Uh, they can totally live perfectly fine by themselves. But if we choose to make a relationship or have a relationship with someone and bring it into our life, we need to understand what makes them happy. We, 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 shouldn't start, we shouldn't keep thinking, how can I train a dog? We should think, how can we train ourselves to be responsible to somebody else's life? Most people have bad habits. Let's think about those bad habits first. Most people don't exercise, but yet they want to have a dog. But if they don't exercise for themselves, how are they going to exercise for a dog? You see it? So you have to pay attention to your bad habits before you actually teach those bad habits to somebody else. Then blame them from having bad habits. 
It's the same thing. You can only teach what you know. Right. You can't tell your dog to change without you changing. He is you. Indeed, the pack leader is back.